from Georgia, Mr. Bishop. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the measure under consideration. Okay. Madam Speaker, objection. today marks the 20th day of the partial government shutdown. Each day pushes many of our government's vital services to the breaking point further jeopardizing the 800,000 federal employees who are furloughed and the countless other Americans feeling the shutdown's impact. The Agriculture, Rural Development, Food and Drug Administration and Related Agencies Appropriations Bill is a critically important piece of legislation for our nation. From the food we eat to the medications we depend on, this bill touches the lives of every American. It must be passed now, and the furloughed employees at these vital federal agencies, uh, our farmers, our agribusinesses, and the other Americans who are depending on their livelihoods must be brought back to work. Because of the shutdown, USDA has stopped making loans and grants for rural development programs, such as housing, water and wastewater facilities and community facilities. New grants to our universities for agriculture research cannot be made. Across the nation, Farm Service Agency County offices have been closed since December 28th. Farmers applying for relief from retaliatory tariffs are in limbo, waiting for the shutdown to end. Nearly 33,000 USDA employees who are funded by this bill are currently furloughed. At the Federal Drug Administration, more than 10,000 employees are working without pay, while another 7,000 have been furloughed, which is impacting everything from user fee collections to the reduction of food safety inspections, jeopardizing the food we eat. According to USDA, nearly 9,000 9, people are working without pay to inspect our meat, poultry, and our egg products. This bill would fund the Food Safety and Inspection Service at over $1 billion and restore our safety. I'll be the first person to admit that this bill is not perfect, but no bill ever is. However, this is about opening the government and putting it back to work for the American people. This bill has passed the Senate by a vote of 92 to 6. There's no reason why we should not pass this bill since it has already been adopted by the leadership of the Senate and the members of the Senate overwhelmingly so that we can put American workers back uh, on the job. Specifically, this legislation provides over $23 billion in discretionary funding for USDA and FDA. That is $225 million above the 2018 enacted, enacted level. It provides $2.73 billion for agricultural research conducted by the Agricultural Research Service and NIFA, an increase of $114 million from FY 2018. These increases will help to ensure American agriculture remains competitive with other nations. The Farm Service Agency, whose county offices shuttered on December 28th is funded at $1.6 billion. In my district, all of the USDA Farm County offices are now closed. These offices are the primary line of communication for our farmers and our ranchers by providing critical data, processing loans, and answering questions. Without this assistance and information, they are left in the dark when it comes to planning for next year's harvest. Peanut sellers and cotton growers who suffered from the recent Hurricane Michael, uh, they are at a loss because they have product that's stored in warehouses that they need to sell in order to get income. But they can't get those sales accomplished without okay from the Farm Service Agency. Those offices are closed. Nobody's there. This legislation also makes significant investments in rural development by providing 
$3.8 billion, and it takes a balanced approach with investments in water and wastewater facilities, broadband, housing, and rural businesses. Again, right now, as a result of the shutdown, loans and grants that help small towns and rural communities all across the country are not being made. This legislation rejects the President's proposed elimination of the Food for Peace program and instead funds it at $1.716 billion, which is $216 million above the House bill. And the McGovern Dole program, which was also proposed for elimination by the President, is funded at $210 million, slightly above the House level. And I might note that the House funded both of these uh, contrary to the President's wishes. Finally, this legislation funds the Federal Drug Administration at $2.97 billion, which is $159 million above the FY18 enacted level, a 6% increase. I'd also like to point out that this bill does better than the House in addressing the opioid crisis that is hitting every single district in the country. It also provides more funding for food safety than the House bill. After nearly three weeks of uncertainty, it looks like the nearly 40 million people who are receiving supplemental nutrition assistance program benefits will be able to keep their benefits, at least through February. However, the funds for SNAP beneficiaries for a single mother or a small uh, shopkeeper will run dry in March. This bill, which provides $73.2 billion in mandatory funding for SNAP, will end any doubt about this and it will give these recipients the peace of mind that they deserve. Through a diverse urban rural coalition, this legislation includes our farmer safety net, our food and nutrition programs. Families, farmers, ranchers, and producers go to work every morning. So should their government, and I urge my colleagues to support this bill. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves the balance of his time. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Alabama, Mr. Adderholt.